welcome to the Shabby Chic Vintage Chicks. Today we're going to be working with printables. We have a printable club coming out and I'm so excited about it. But we kind of did a practice run by giving the girls in the sorority um, a head start with some August print printables and this was one of them. It's an adorable little barn scene. It's got a little Highland cow in there and then we've got this kind of leafy sunflower and bird background that can be used for so many other things. Now to start off with, I'm gonna grab one of our house cutouts. Um, that's what I designed it for, but this could be used on tags or anything else, even dollar store finds. Now I'm gonna paint it white first. Um, it's just gonna help all your colors pop when you're decoupaging, no matter what you're doing, whether it's napkins or um, a print that you buy or a printable like these. And today we're gonna to be actually doing this two times because I have one of them that's been printed out onto regular printer paper and one of them that's been printed out from our home printer onto mulberry paper. So just to show the difference. So I'm just gonna start by painting it out white. It doesn't have to be a perfect coat, just something that's gonna brighten it up. I did speed it up a bit so that you don't have to, you know, sit there and watch paint go on and we're gonna speed up the paint drying process too for you. So here we go here. If only we could move that quick, right? <laughs> Okay, so once this is dry, I'm gonna apply a layer of Mod Podge. If you find that your paint is a little thick, you can go over it with sandpaper and just kind of like level out any brush strokes that you have. I'm actually not sanding there at all, but I just wanted to show you that it could be done. Um, mine went on super smooth, but sometimes when your jar is getting a little thick, you might have a little more brush strokes than other times. So there we go. So here goes the Mod Podge, just a nice, well, I wouldn't say a thin coat. It's going to be kind of a liberal coat. You don't want it too thin. You really want to make sure you get to all your edges. And then we're going to just simply heat up our iron and we're going to iron this on. So this will go pretty quickly here. probably should have sped up the whole process because you guys know how to paint this on. So we're going to dry it first. Now some people like putting it on wet Mod Podge and if you do or if you have another sort of decoupage medium that you prefer that's great as well. I really like the iron on method for flat surfaces so that's the way I'm going to be doing this project today. Now to make sure I can line it up pretty good I'm going to kind of cut this out. Now I'm not fussy cutting it I'm just kind of you know going vaguely around the project. It's going to help me line it up because it's going on a tag that, or not a tag, but a, um, a house cutout that is pretty much the same size. So this is just to help me line it up. Now when you think you have it into position, you're just gonna to wanna to grab a piece of parchment paper. Now I use my parchment paper over and over and over again, unless some Mod Podge gets on it, but as long as it's clean, I still keep using it. So we're just gonna iron it on. Now I use the iron at the hottest setting. Um, I never mess with it, but I make sure there's no water in your iron. Um, you don't want any steam, it's gonna wreck your design. Then I simply go around the edges with my sandpaper. And this one here is just done on the regular printer paper, okay? In a few minutes, I'll show you the same process done on Mulberry. There we go, it's just that easy. Now, um, I am gonna use some ink here just to enhance the edges. So I'm using Distressing Ink, and um, I make sure that it is the archival one, um, just so that it doesn't run. If you use the other one, when you put a wet um, top coat on this, like we're going to be doing a top coat of Mod Podge, you'll find that sometimes your ink runs, but if you use the archival one, it never does. So I'm doing this before I put my top coat on this side. And the only thing that I notice is um, whether you do it on your very last step or before you apply your Mod Podge is when you're using paper, it tends to absorb it really quickly. So once you've got that ink on there, there is man no maneuvering it. It's just, it's there and that's where it's gonna be, okay? So then I go ahead and I put my layer of Mod Podge on top. 
Now you'll see on the other side when we do it with the mulberry paper, I'm actually going to do it a little differently and I'll explain why when we get there. Then we're going to dry this up. And that's it, that's all. It is done. So I'm going to take the stand and I'm going to paint it out with our leather brown or leather bound brown sorry um, this is uh, chalk paint that we use by the way it's done by country chic you can find it on our website if you'd like so you can do a dark coat like that but what I really prefer to do is to grab a baby wipe and use it more like a stain it also makes your paint go further so I really like the wood grain that's why we use real wood instead of MDF is so that you have those options so there we go and that's it that's all it should stand nicely in there if you find that it's a little snug, you can always sand back your edge on the um, raw side. Don't sand back, of course, your, your printed side, but you could sand it back if you find it a little snug, just because you've got that two layers of Mod Podge and your um, paper. Now on this side, again, I'm gonna paint it out in white. I'm gonna speed this up quite a bit for you. Just gonna make sure I've got it on nice and smooth. Again, I'm gonna show you if you have any brush strokes that you can take the sandpaper to it. Again, I did not need to, but I just thought I would show you. And now we're gonna apply our Mod Podge. Now, I'm gonna to talk to you about the music while we're waiting for this to happen. <laughs> because you've seen how I cut this out and stuff. So the music that you're hearing in the background is actually, my husband just came back from BC, and when he was down at the market, there was a gentleman that was playing a wood instrument. And uh, Chris happened to pick it up in his video, and I thought this was perfect for this background music. So I hope you enjoy that. I wish I knew the artist's name, but um, I hope you enjoy. So now I'm just gonna iron this into place. It's all done ever, like totally the same. Especially for a flat surface, I don't think there's much difference at all in the mulberry as opposed to just your regular printer paper. So maybe flat surfaces like this, it's probably better to use your printer paper just because it's cheap um, or more frugal, I should say. Um, but there's really no difference at all. Now this time though, I'm going to put my Mod Podge on before I do any inking. And of course, you don't even have to do inking, but I kind of find it gives a nice finished touch to the edges on this. So I'm applying the Mod Podge, making sure it's a nice, even coat. It doesn't have to be too thick on this. And then I'm going to apply my ink. Now, the reason that I usually would do it this way is because if you don't like it, or if you want to enhance it more, like smudge it out more um, to give you more depth or something, it can be done if it's over top of the Mod Podge, where if you do your Mod Podge over top of this, of course, there's no moving it because that napkin or that paper really holds it. So that's it, that's all, and I'm gonna show you how I displayed it, but I really hope you enjoyed this project. Again, this one is still available in the sorority, so if you decide to join our sorority, you can find this printable in there, um, as well as a couple others that will not be available in our printable group. So I really hope you enjoyed this, and uh, there it is.